my team. Uh, okay. Russell Bussin from the University of Otago, uh, who works in the Higher Education Development Center. Uh, and he will be talking about student generated John, content term is generally used in the watch it. And he's been a long time advocate of it in asking students to produce uh, papers for a student run journal. Uh, then Willie Campbell at the at the Targo Polytechnic works for Capable NZ, which was formerly called work there, the Centre for Assessment of Prior Learning. And from what I could gather, they were some of the more advanced collection of ideas people on that notion of recognition of prior learning, which they were quick to correct and say assessment of prior learning. Uh, the difference primarily being, I think, from memory is that recognition of prior learning is usually preoccupied with what formal education have you done before, show me your certificates, and that will accelerate you through this course. Whereas assessment of prior learning is a much more intensive process of interviewing somebody, extracting from them the evidence they need to um, accelerate through the course as far as possible. But Willie will correct me if I'm wrong on that. She now works that organization has now changed its name to Capital NZ and does some fascinating things. So I'll mute our mic and we'll um, I'll just plug in our speakers so we can hear uh, Russell start us off. Just give me a tick, Russell. Okay. Can you turn Yep. Uh, you hear me all right? We can. Thanks very much, Russell. Okay, thanks. Lee. Okay. Uh, hi everyone, so I'm at the University of Otago in the Higher Education Development Centre and uh, I'm looking at the clock now and I've got 10 minutes to zip through uh, a number of slides uh, covering the topic around student publishing. So I'll flick over to share my screen, um, which should now be uh, visible, is that right Lee? That's yeah. great, thanks very much. Does that come up? All right, so I'm just going to, as I say, do quite a quick flyover. So um, I won't be going into the detail. It's just a, a sort of a teaser to give you a feel of what we have been looking at um, here at Otago. Um, so we started off with this problem. It's sort of a dissatisfaction by students regarding the effort involved in writing research papers. These were medical students um, that felt that they did all this work in these research projects and pretty much they were thrown into a drawer. Uh, and really it's... It's, it came down to this idea that my research paper as an undergraduate and my coursework, I do this bartering system where I swap it and I get a grade back. Uh, and the feeling was that, but I've spent so much time on that piece of work and now no one's looking at it, no one's actually reading it. Uh, what's the point of it? And so the process that followed after that, and we did a, went through a few discussions and meetings, uh, and I met with sort of second, third and fourth year medical students, about six of them, uh, and we're, really what they're wanting to do is say, sort of say, you know, can we gain some value from this work other than just the grade? I mean, what can we, can we do with it, uh, you know, with this piece of material, this eight months or six months I've been involved in doing some research on this paper? So we started to look at the idea of an academic journal and as a group we started to talk about the coursework. Instead of this bartering, this swapping for a grade, they felt uh, that they should be distributing this to an audience. So why would I write if it's not for an audience uh, and not for a grade? It's for someone to read and give me feedback. So this idea was that um, let's take these documents and find some way to distribute them, probably through the idea of an academic journal, to an audience. And whether they're graded before we do that distribution, but they felt it would be even better if they were graded after that, uh, because then you could in, you actually include some of the feedback. Now they talked to some of the department people, and while the department was quite keen on the idea and said, you know, we, we support it as long as it doesn't affect your grades, of course, don't do too much work on it, it was seen as sort of an extracurricular activity, uh, and therefore there wasn't any possible way it would gain credit. That didn't bother the group, so they continued to uh, carry on working. What they uh, were quite clear about, though, when they talked to some of the faculty members, was this idea around governance. Um, they did. We became clear that there were some student journals that were department driven. Uh, so the department set the journals up and it was students' work. But this group was very clear that they wanted it to be student driven. They didn't want other people defining what should be going into these journals. So they put together a quick structure where they kept control. 
set up their editorial board, had section editors, had their journal, had funding looking at advertising uh, and printing and the distribution. Now this is all undertaken by uh, five or six students, medical students, in their own time. So they're not, they're not receiving any time off, any credit, it's just something they're doing outside of their uh, normal studies. But this distinction between department driven and student driven is quite core because that editorial board to some extent operates as the gatekeeper on what goes in this journal and what they felt was they wanted to have a journal that replicated their experiences of particular topics within their discipline from their, uh, from their angle, not from something from a department's view, this has got to be at a different level or not this topic. So they, and this isn't, don't want you to read this, this is just to give you an idea of the sort of level of complexity this group uh, went at this project with. So they developed quite a, a sophisticated schema uh, that allowed lots of feedback tries up the top here, this just shows where students that submitted work would get two or three goes um, of, and some editing support to make sure their work met a standard that they thought was going to be publishable. So it wasn't submit your work and if you didn't, if it, if it wasn't up to the standard, sorry, we don't accept it. There was this developmental process that was built in. Uh, so at the very beginning, there was this feeling that we really don't want to turn down any papers uh, for, for our colleagues. We want to encourage them to go through this process where they can get some feedback, change it and rewrite. So the idea was it may go through two or three cycles. So they built all this into quite a sophisticated uh, schema to work around. Uh, that was back in 2006, it's, uh, this, the journal is called the New Zealand Medical Student Journal um, and it has published many issues now, so it's been going for a number of years, it's still completely driven by students, um, they have developed a number of processes and templates where they can uh, work through their small number of 12 people I think they have at any given time and produce quite a, a, a high-end journal. They produce both uh, the print version and they've also moved into using uh, an online version. So this is a software called uh, Open Journal System, so it's a freely available software. It's been installed on a server here at the university and so it's also offered uh, as an open journal uh, on, this, uh, on the system. So the amount of work to go from where they started to this point was extreme. They also set in place uh, systems where uh, members stayed on for two to three years and new members came in, so they're always having a nice mix for that succession of existing members that knew what, how the journal should be operated versus uh, the new members that were coming on board. Uh, remembering there's no credit for their actual academic work but most of them were seeing the credit for this as part of their CV and all the leadership skills and uh, as a few of them said, this is the first time I can actually act like an adult when they're operating in this space, uh, whereas quite different in their, in their medical, day-to-day uh, -day medical uh, training. Some of the points that I just pulled out to highlight some of the impact. So it sort of provides a meaningful outlet for the work that was often previously abandoned. Uh, that was core. And these students that were running this journal went around their colleagues, both at Otago and across the other medical uh, schools, and we've had uh, students submitting from Australia as well, informing them to pull out those old articles, those old research papers, and uh, work on them and submit them. Certainly exposed students to a research culture early in their career. So it demystified this whole research process, uh, which is quite common for medical students by the time they get further down the track and, the, and there's pressure on for them to actually publish, they've built up quite a degree of resistance and fear. So it sort of demystified all this process, they were running it, they were actually in charge of running the journal and producing a high quality um, output. Uh, certainly broaden and strengthen their professional development for those involved in running. They all took on quite mature roles, um, they operate this in a very professional uh, manner and have done since 2006. It's gone through probably a hundred students involved in the leadership and running of the journal uh, since that time and they continue to run it and be quite independent uh, with, with some good support from the uh, department. Uh, and it offers this opportunity for 
undergrad students uh, to be able to publish and it's got the student voice. There have certainly been topics in the journals that have been published that probably wouldn't have been allowed uh, to have gone into it if it was a department uh, journal. So it does hold on to this idea of the student perspective or the student voice as far as the content uh, in the journal. So that was uh, the sort of trial or beginning that we played around with, with this notion of journals and publication and writing for the finding authorship for the purpose of writing. We then tried uh, with another department um, situating this, this idea of student journals within the curriculum, giving it some value within the course. You know, is it, was it possible to get something like this working and gaining credit for it? So we tried it. Again, the main drivers were around this idea that if you're writing, at least it's a personal journal, if you're writing, you need an audience. You want that audience. It's the whole idea of why we write and we want to soapbox particular views or ideas or some data and get some feedback. So again, the same sort of driver. Uh, we set it up as a class journal, so it was private. It was for 70 um, health students uh, for them to publish their research work over that year. It operated across three semesters, so three different lots of cohorts we, uh, that were using this platform. Um, and it did require considerable input from some of the faculty be in, uh, to be involved, but it was a private closed site, so only the 70 uh, science, health science students had access to it and about uh, six faculty members had access to it. In this case it became slightly complicated because as we started we wanted to move more and more into making it developmental, but typically number one, we set up the OJS um, journal. Students uh, registered on the journal as both a reviewer and an author. Uh, their work, number two, then was submitted. They would submit their research paper. It was then sorted out through a blind peer review processing system where we automatically matches it. Every student received uh, two to three papers to review. Once they had finished those reviews as a reviewer, they were then sent back as reviews completed. As a author, they received their paper back with reviews on that paper, two to three reviews. Some of those reviews were faculty members, in fact one of, one of the, each of the reviews for all of them was a faculty member, and then they reworked their paper based on those reviews and then submitted back to their completed articles. Uh, once all the articles were completed, a couple of students worked with uh, the faculty member and then the journal was published to the class, so everyone then had access to it. In this process, we tried to push the assessment over to the side. It wasn't the point of doing the task, it was running along beside. Two parts were extracted from this process of, of aiming to publish. One was that their reviews were, were collected as part of their assessment, their ability to actually undertake the reviews, and the reviews were controlled by a template that had been developed, so there was good guidance and structure for them. And the second was that their actual paper that was in a published state uh, was part of that uh, final assessment. But it wasn't, as I say, it wasn't the driving force why they were doing this, it was this other process that we were going through. Impact or the sort of highlights from doing this, well, you know, the students stated that they were more clear about the standard required for publishing than they were about what was required for a grade, so we thought that was quite uh, fascinating. Uh, and certainly most of the ones we spoke to said they would lift the standard um, if their peers were going to be reading their work. Uh, rather than just going to be submitted for a, a grade. Uh, and just about all of the students that we spoke with often uh, around this whole idea um, felt that it was quite rewarding and meaningful because they were aiming to, for this audience, this whole idea of writing uh, for an audience and knowing that there could be some feedback but at least, as one person pointed out, people were actually reading my work, uh, it was actually there and it was being read. We also found it interesting that after the course finished, and these are third year undergrads, um, that the site was um, gaining a lot of hits around what we call the end of our semester, around that sort of November through to January. And we made the assumption that lots of those students had gone home, were logging in and showing their grandparents and parents and, uh, and friends and families. When the publications went up on the site, they used a template, so they're quite graphically uh, attractive as well, that was automatically produced them into uh, a reasonably nice finished uh, product. 
And that's my quick flyover, and I see that my 10 minutes is up, Lee. Thanks very much, Russell. Uh, give you a few seconds to transfer over to... Yep. to